Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I'm working on yet another fun art project. This is something that I've done many times before, uh, both for myself and in the store that I had for a couple of years, a little vintage store that was in the train caboose, and I miss it so much. Uh, but I have my workshop now, which Jason made sure of that, and I so appreciate that. I will always be grateful to him for saying, you know what, you still need a space. And he just cleaned this up for me, and I love it so much out here. I also did these when I was at the Scrap Exchange, and I've done them for myself in little art coves when I was in my old house. Just a place to display things, maybe to make themed uh, displays, and you know, it's not anything fancy. Normally, I would have my um, like tacky glue, super that that super tacky glue, or some kind of adhesive. I'm going to use the glue gun this morning, just for the sake of working through this kind of quickly. You can take nice heavy boxes and make a shadow box. You don't have to go out and find an expensive, you know, printer's tray or whatever. Behind this, and I love the thing behind this as well, this is a really heavy piece of chipboard that was on my art desk. I think this is actually one, you can see tape and a definite outline. I think I used this like an easel to do one of my guitar paintings. And I just, I happened to find this. It's heavy enough to, to serve as a back drop or something really sturdy to hold all these boxes into place. And it's not gonna give or bend. So you do need something, even if it's a cheap piece of plywood, like really thin, you know, something that you can use. Well, I shouldn't say really thin, but you know what I mean. You don't need a big two by four or something. So, is this thing, work? yeah, there we go, whoa. We're gonna make sure to sturdy this up even more, and we, we will get to that. But for now, I'm just gonna use hot glue to put all of this into place. Let's go ahead with, where do we want these? Okay, maybe, okay, I'll do this one next. Cause I wanna see this line up right at the bottom here of the other box we already have in place. This box looks like it has a lid that's sitting on the bottom, but it doesn't. It's, um, it's just made like that, and I think it makes it really interesting. So let's put that there. And again, we're gonna come back. Did I have, no, hello. We're gonna come back and make sure that these are all even more secure and you will see what I mean. This one's gonna be here, but it's gonna be really special. I'm gonna put a little vignette in there, make that like its own shadow box. And for now, let's just keep putting these into place. You need nice heavy boxes for this. Uh, durable, I should say. You know, the more, the heavier the boxes are, the more you need to make sure they're really secure to the backboard. So let's put that there. And we're gonna put another little box inside of that to make the, the little compartment smaller, like a real shadow box. So let's put that right in there and get this little box into place. I wonder if we wanna add, we could do that. We could put this right inside there. Um, or in here. No, that's gonna go there. No, I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. I think I'm gonna put this one in here just to give us more places for little tiny things. Okay. That is there. And now we have our shadow box ready to hang and we're gonna figure out a way to hang that. Okay, so one of the fun parts, and we're at this point, and I might turn the camera off for a little bit while I do some decorating. Now you have all of this space that you can add color, you can add acrylic paint, you can glue down backgrounds of 
um, vintage paper ephemera and I'm going to be working on that. I will come back. I don't want to take up too much of your time while I'm just fiddling around with this. Okay, I have such a huge mess here, but let's drop back in and see where we are right now. I wanted to show you how I am attaching the boxes with extra support. You know, we glued them down with the hot glue gun. I wasn't sure that they were going to really stay. Uh, let me show you one thing I will probably do, and that is come back and just let some glue fall under the edges there and hold that into place. Now, for the sake of, um, you can see some of the alcohol ink was running there on the side. That's okay. This I have more to add. We're going to make this just grungy and keep adding layers. What I am doing to make sure they stay into place, you start with your awl, and let's move this out of the way. Just punch through, and you need to hold, you know, support the back. Don't punch through your finger. I'm just going to twist this until it goes all the way through all layers and turn it to make sure that hole is big enough to then go back through with a craft knife like a um exacto knife and that makes that hole sort of elongated so that a brad will just slide right through there and it gives it a really pretty look in the front kind of like a nail and then we're going to come to the back and pushing hard from the front, then we're going to fold those down in the back. We will probably go back and put some tape over that in the back. Um, I've dropped a lot of alcohol ink. For one thing, this was an apple box, and I wanted to cover up that apple emblem. There are some, there's a really pretty gold leaf that I've hot glued into there. These two things, the little frame and the bottle cap that I found while out on a nature walk, I wanted those to stand out a little bit, so I used an X-Acto knife to cut a cork down, and I just used hot glue behind that. If it comes loose, I will re-glue it. One of the things I do like about hot glue, it's not a permanent glue that's going to ruin the inside of this bottle cap. Like if I wanted to take it off later, I feel like the hot glue will just pop away from that. There's part of an old playing card that was already torn, so I used half of that. I love this little, it's, it's like a fly that's been pressed into some resin. And because of the shape of it, it would never stand up in a regular shadow box. You can see it's rounded on the front. So I glued that into place with hot glue, and you can't even see the hot glue behind it. This, of course, is one of the dominoes that I put the bail onto, and I love the way that's going to hang up. I might shorten that chain that it's on. Again, I used my awl to punch a hole in the top while supporting the box itself and ran some, well, I put a um, grommet in there also and then ran some copper wire through there and tightened that up. So this can just be a way to display things that you like to look at, things that, you know, just, I don't know, maybe not really valuable, but things that you found. Let's go ahead and cut this down just a little bit. I know I shouldn't use my scissors for that, but... This is me, and I want to buy something to sharpen my scissors. Those scissors are not just fabric scissors either. I use them for everything. I wouldn't use really nice fabric scissors to cut through wire or metal. Okay, let's press that down, and I see where the glue is sort of running out at the bottom. We may end up putting a brad in there as well. The main thing I want you to see, though, is not to be afraid to make things, to work on things, to put things together. I love assemblage. I love collage work. I love making miniature things, and I definitely have more to share in that realm of creativity. Uh, I'm not an expert. I just, I'm not afraid to try making something and to make mistakes. And that said, I think I am going to put a brad in there. And I'm going to do some more decorating. Okay, everybody, I'm back with pretty much the finished shadow box. 
and I think it is adorable. I think it's really pretty. I think it's something that you could hang in an art studio and be proud of in the sense that it's art and it doesn't have to be fancy again. Okay, so let's see, what is not attached? This is not attached. I think everything else is pretty much safely into place so that I can turn this over and show you the back. This was just a really heavy piece of chipboard. You can see where I put the brads through to hold the boxes in place even more, you know, with more strength. And then getting back over here, of course, there's the little domino pendant that we attached with the copper wire. I did put holes about two inches in from each side and I put some grommets in. That takes a little work. I used my awl and my craft knife to make the hole big enough to put the grommets in. And instead of running a wire like all the way across because I was afraid it will pull on this in such a way to make it bend, I put a wire through each, through each grommet so that I can hang it on the wall and have equal pressure. Now there's already so much out here. You might say, why in the world? Do you need one more thing on the wall? And I'm thinking, why wouldn't I need one more thing on the wall? And I actually have a place that I think this will fit and be really pretty and give me a little bit more space to sit tiny things. For instance, like this glass bottle that's got an awl in it. It could sit up here. Also, little bottles of alcohol ink or treasures that I find when Jason and I go um, walking through the woods, things like that. These, so I ended up moving these two containers around. This is just a metal tin. There's not anything inside there, but I think it's so pretty to cut out an image. Let me lay this flat. To cut out an image that's going to fit perfectly into the lid, and then when you put the lid on, it holds it into place. So it's like a really big kind of interesting frame. I did put a brad on the inside of this to hold it into place. Uh, Gail, if you're watching, there's one of the copper tags you gave me and I used alcohol ink to stamp the word birdsong. You can see where the S ran. I'm not going to worry too much about that. These things that are standing out, I've already mentioned, there's cork behind them to lift them away from the box a little bit. You can see the playing card. There are some beautiful leaves in here that I found recently and decided to put in. I love the color and the texture of those. Here's one of the tiny little journals I made. And let's see if we can get this open. You might remember this. It's sewn in the way I love to sew the signatures in with the fabric. And then it's just full of nature items. So that is sitting in the little shadow box. I could also add, like, here is the letter A that I could sit in front of the apple. Again, you can just sit things in here. Everything doesn't have to be glued, but I think it's really nice to have a large part of it glued into place. Something you want to think about when you're putting things in, if you're looking at it just head on, you're not really seeing your shelves. So don't forget to add fabric or tape, you know, like the washi tape or stickers spots of ink, whatever you want to put into place to give you more interest on this part of your shadow box. I am indeed going to hang this in the place that I think it would be really pretty and I will show you a picture of how that turned out. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you to new subscribers. Oh, and I want to mention one more thing. I've turned the ads on on my channel on some of the videos. This is somewhat of a test for me. I've held off on doing that. But now that art is my full-time business, um, every time I say that, I feel like I'm talking about a man named Art. But now that my art, my crafting, my channel, my business, my website, now that that is my full-time income, I felt like it would be appropriate to turn the ads on. I wanna say up front, don't feel like you have to watch them. If you wanna give me feedback about seeing those that you don't like them or that, yeah, you know, you need to make all the money that you can since this is what you do. I personally love being able to support other channels. I'm not saying that to make you watch any ads on my channel, but like, uh, just for an example, 
well, I'm not going to name any names. I do love to watch other channels, and I may turn one of my favorite channels on out here in the workshop when I'm creating. And if I'm doing busy work and just cleaning up and going from spot to spot, making something like working on this, I let their ads play because I know it helps them. And I'm not doing it just, just for that purpose. Sometimes I hear something that's interesting, like a health ad that's talking about ways to burn fat. Or it might be... Um, it might be advertising a system to help you build a business, and I really want to hear what they're saying. So, you know, then again, there are other days that I'm really focused on the content, and I don't have time to listen to the ads, and I skip the ads. I just wanted to add that ad, ad, ADD. I just wanted to throw that out there and let you know why the ads are on, and it does take a lot of work to make good content for a channel. So do what you feel is best for you. I'm always open to the feedback that you leave, whether it's you know, critical in the sense that you don't like what's happening or whether you're saying thank you, and I appreciate that so very much. Oh, wow. I'm really not quite believing that this fit perfectly. There were two nails already in the wall back here, and this little section was kind of a... Um, Oh, what do you call it? Like a storyboard. I, w I used big clips to hang up pieces of art that were inspiring to me and that I wanted to eventually do something with. Anyway, I think you can see it. I'm going to go for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you really soon. Bye for now.